Hi everyone, it's another episode of the amazing Row House Renovation, where I take you through an entire real life renovation of a 100 year old home in downtown Toronto. From planning and design right through to move in day, I'm taking you through the full process of updating this old home. So sit tight, episode six is up next. Over the last several episodes, I've shown you all the steps in renovating this old home. I started with a home that had pretty good bones, but it needed a brand new update to bring it up to today's standards. In the second episode, I showed you my wish list and the new floor plans that were used to apply for a building permit with the city and eventually start construction. Episode three was all about the demolition phase. The house was gutted and it revealed all those good bones. High ceilings, great natural light, especially for a row house, and some beautiful brick walls. The fourth episode was all about construction. New windows, a new double door to the backyard, and all the stuff inside the walls. Once our building inspector gave us the thumbs up, the walls were closed up. And in our last episode, we started with the finishes with new tile for the bathrooms and a beautiful herringbone wood floor for the rest of the house. Here's where we ended up. Once the flooring was installed, it was time to stain and finish it, and I decided to keep it as close to natural as possible. I just loved seeing all the natural variation of the wood and its wood grain. You'll see more of it very soon. Next step was installing all the baseboards, trim moldings, and interior doors. There are so many profiles available to choose from, but I just wanted something that would have made sense a hundred years ago. So I chose a simple profile called the Step Bevel Baseboard and Matching Casing. Also, I wanted to add more width to the casing around the doors and the windows, so I added a back band as well. So once it's all together, it looks like this. The last finishing touch when it comes to moldings is the quarter round. But instead of quarter round, I prefer to use shoe mold. Here's what the two look like side by side. I like the shoe mold because it's a little more upscale than the quarter round, and I like that it's a flatter profile and more architectural. All of that trim will be painted along with all the walls and the ceilings, which means we're getting closer to the end. But first, one of the biggest changes to this home is happening in the kitchen. In the last episode, I showed you the changes to the kitchen and the new design for the kitchen. This was the old layout. Since I removed the old door and window at the back of the house and replaced it with a large double door, a galley style kitchen is the most efficient use of space. On one side, I've got the sink, dishwasher, and stove. On the opposite side, I've got a large pull-out pantry and the fridge. And the day finally came for the kitchen to be installed. From this, to this, and now this. New cabinets full of specialty inserts like waste bins, pot drawers, and a pull-out pantry. White shaker doors are a classic, and sleek, modern black hardware for instant contrast. Did you see the herringbone flooring peeking through there? Look again. And then of course, another biggie, the countertop install followed a couple of weeks after the kitchen was installed. In this case, I chose quartz countertops because they are durable, stain and heat resistant, and non-porous, so it's a great surface to have in your kitchen. And they look great too. So now we're into the final stretch. But we do have one thing that you may have noticed is rather important and still missing from this 100-year-old home. Did you say railings? Yes, we need railings for the stairs and landings for obvious reasons, but we also need them to close out the building permit. The stairs themselves needed some attention. We spent quite a bit of time repairing these old stairs, removing 100 years worth of layers of paint and stain, stripping them down to their bare bones because we're going to paint them and lay down a stair runner. They might look a little rough, but trust me, they're super smooth and will look great once we paint them. In fact, they're already looking better with the first coat of primer. What color do you think they should be? 
white like the trim or do we bust out the color wheel and pick an actual color? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And remember, we still have another major paint decision on our hands, to paint or not to paint the brick. Now that you've seen a glimpse of the kitchen, what do you think of the brick? I have a plan, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Put it all down there in the comments below. In our next episode, spring will be in full bloom and it's time to tackle the front exterior. I've got major plans for the front and I'll need to clean things up and decide on a front door color too. Inside painting will be in full swing and our lighting fixtures will be installed including pot light trims, ceiling lights, wall sconces and pendant light fixtures. So be sure to hit the notification button so you don't miss episode 7. It's amazing to see all the finishing touches come together. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this video, the design process or this renovation in particular, leave them in the comments below. I'll make sure to respond and I'd love to get your feedback. And most importantly, if you like this video, hit the like button, share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe for more of my design tidbits. I've got new videos every week. See you next time and happy renovating everybody.